morning. My name is Clayton Turtlelot. I'm the Deputy Fire Chief here in Oxford. Welcome to our 2009 Open House, kicking off Fire Prevention Week in the town of Oxford. Today we're having an open house of the Fire Department. And you'll see different uh, areas of our skills and expertise on display today. Also putting out fire prevention materials for the children and adults. This year's theme of Fire Prevention Week is Be Fire Smart, Don't Get Burned. One of the issues we've seen here in Oxford in the last few years is people receiving burn injuries at fire scenes in their homes. And we're looking to put a stop to that unsafe practice. One of the issues that we've seen is that people try to put out their own fires and are receiving burn injuries. In the last three or four years, we've had 15 people transported to hospitals because of burns they've received in their homes. Almost half of these are due to people trying to put out the fires themselves before leaving the house. One thing you'll see today is a demonstration of a new fire extinguisher training system that we have procured. Adults will have a chance to actually get some hands-on experience using fire extinguishers and putting out a simulated stovetop fire. This equipment was purchased through the use of federal grant funds this year as a result of our indication of burn injuries in the homes. This equipment has a price tag of over $10,000 and you'll see it is quite sophisticated and hopefully will give a good lesson to all those who use it. We will also be demonstrating automobile extrication today using our heavy rescue equipment as well as a children's fire muster where they can actually participate with real fire clothes, real fire hose, knocking down a simulated house fire. Uh, should be a good time for all and I think the children always enjoy participating in being part of the fire service here in Oxford. We also have several fire safety tips and prevention materials on display and for the children to take home today. We hope that these lessons will be shared with the families. In the following week, our fire prevention group will be giving presentations in the schools. This year we will be presenting to children in grades pre-K through grades 5. We reach about 1,300 children every year through this program. This program is funded in part by a state grant called the SAFE Grant, Students Awareness of Fire Education. And we do over 16 different classroom presentations during Fire Prevention Week. Again, the children will be taking home fire prevention materials, and we hope they have a chance to share that with the families. One important drill that you can use at home is your safety drill, fire exit and safety drill. Children do fire drills at school. A lot of adults do fire drills at their work. What we're asking is that you do fire drills at home also. Have a safe way, at least two exits out of your home. Have a good meeting place where everybody can meet at the same place and be accounted for, just like at school. This is something you can practice at home on a weekend or after supper one night. Make it a family fun event and do it at least once or twice a year. Also, don't forget to change your smoke detector batteries when the clocks change. That's a good time to remember to do that. We ask all residents to please participate in that program on your own and help us out with fire safety in the town of Oxford. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the tour through the fire station today. And if you ever have any questions, please stop by or give us a call. We're always here to help.
Okay, what you're going to do right now is you're going to show you how to stabilize a vehicle at an accident scene. They lift up on just the body and put up in what we call step blocks to keep the vehicle from rocking while they're on it. For the safety of the personnel, for the vehicle and for the patient. What we're going to do now is we have uh, Take out the winch. They're going to remove the battery first. Okay, they're going to kill the power in the battery. What they do is they cut the power cable, and that disables every all the electrical components in the vehicle. Again, safety of firefighters is your first concern and your patient. As soon as that's done. What they're going to do is take out the windshield. We have a special, well, we have a, two tools for that, a hand saw and an electric saw, where we can cut the windshield right out and remove it. Battery, battery's been cut. Well, it's been removed. As soon as the battery has been disabled, the glass will be removed from the vehicle. Okay, the electrical system in the vehicle is now disabled. You have firefighter the flash and firefighter Rudman who are taking the windshield out. What we do is we use a coarse bladed hand saw or a, an electric saber saw with a water soap mixture to keep the dust down and keep the uh, the shards from flying. And if you notice, they're taking out the glass in the side windows which is done with a spring-loaded punch. This is also for safety of the patient and the firefighters when the door removal is done. Firefighter paramedic uh, Roger Lambert has what is known as a combi tool. It's a combination spreader and cutter. It has 12,000 pounds of uh, hydraulic power which can easily pop the doors on any vehicle or cut cut through the metal if need be. They're doing the same thing on the other side. They have a second set. They have a set of spreaders and cutters on separate on separate reels. And if you notice, all window, rear, side, all, all the glass is completely removed. What Firefighter Hudon is doing on the back side is, is making what is known as a pinch point. So we can get the tools in there to remove the, to remove the doors. Because during, during accidents, everything is stuffed in and it's not an easy, easy access. Firefighter Paramedic. The flash has the other set of spreaders, so it's same, we can work on both sides of the vehicle at the same time, which will speed up the extrication process. Firefighter paramedic Langer right now is the overseer. He is basically in charge of the safety of the crews working, make sure that something that they can't see He'll squat, you know, to prevent injury. If you notice, firefighter paramedic Lambert is getting at the door at the, the lock pin which is uh, what holds the door closed. What he does is put pressure on that and automatically just spreads it and rips it right out of the, right out of the hinges.
And as you can see, the hands are away from the tools at all times. Because once those tools close, there is no margin for error for these. Now what he's doing is he's going to the front side of the door to remove the door completely off the hinge side of the vehicle, which will let it access the passenger compartment. If you notice, all firefighters keep their feet and hands away from the tools operation and away from the door itself to prevent injury. Now the door in the front on the passenger side has been completely removed and it is taken out of the way of the extricators. One less thing to trip over. As you can see, Firefighter Hudon is removing the plastic on the inside of the vehicle. On the newer vehicles is a gas powered trip to lock the seat belts. And if you cut into that with the tool, uh, it could cause some serious injuries to both the patient and the firefighters. Firefighter Kaufman now has what we call is just a set of cutters. What it is is a hydraulic pair of scissors with 12,000 pounds of cutting force, which will he will now take what is called the A post of the vehicle and cut through it so we can start the process of roof removal. As you can see on the interior of the vehicle, we have an airbag strap, which is put over the steering wheel of the vehicle in case the airbags have not yet deployed. This will prevent a static charge from deploying the airbag and injuring the patient further or injuring the firefighter. What they're doing right now is Firefighter Yurzer is doing what he's calling a flip, where he grabs the metal, spins it back with the tool to gain access to the, to the lock pin on the door. And if you notice, what they try and do is remove the door in a position that forces the door away from the occupants of the vehicle. Again, to further keep uh, further damage to the person, further injury from, from happening. With tools of this nature, what you have to do is you let the tool go where it wants to go. Uh, there is no way possible uh, anybody's going to hold it. So if it starts twisting, you just go, basically go with the flow, let the tool move. It will get the job done and you will prevent injury. Doors have been removed on the driver's side.
I can tell by the sound they've already cut the A post and the B post on the driver's side. And what they're going to do now is called a wedge cut on the rear because of the width of the C post. The reason they're called A, B, and C is because of the location on the vehicle. As you can see, he's cut front and back on the, pa on the driver's side of the vehicle. The driver's side of the vehicle has now been separated from the rest of the vehicle. And he's coming over to this side to do the same process on this side of the vehicle. We're fortunate in, in the town of Oxford to have a rescue with three pieces of hydraulic equipment all set up, ready to go in a moment's notice. What they're doing right now with the combi tool is they're taking the cutting edge and cutting right through the tempered hinges on the door. And again, doors removed and taken clearly out of the way of the, of the firefighters. As you can see, it only takes seconds for that cutter to go through that material. Again, he's checking for the width and making sure there are no seatbelt tighteners in the, in the area. Once the roof is completely removed, they're going to do a what is known as a dash displacement, which is where they put a small cut in the uh, unibody lower rocker panel frame of the door, and using step blocks, they can actually push the dash and the front end of the car off of the off of the patient. And as you can see, what they're doing now is putting on safeties over the cut pieces to cover the shop edges, uh, less chance of injury to firefighters and additional injury to the patient. All firefighters have full protective gear on, including eye protection, Kevlar gloves, turnout gear, boots and helmets, chin straps, Notice due to lack of material to cover the uh, the C post, what they're doing is taking used towels 
and sheets to cover it, again, to protect firefighters and protect the patient from further injury. They're doing over on the, if you turn to look at the blue top, what they're doing now is they're transferring power from the cutting and spreading tools to a hydraulic ram, which will be used to displace the dash. Many times on a front end collision, this is necessary to remove the patient because of the collapse zone, which usually impacts the driver compartment of the vehicle. All hydraulic tools on Rescue One have a locking mechanism where once they are attached to the tools, they are locked to prevent accidental disconnect. They're setting up two sets of hydraulic rams. You notice the step blocks have three different lengths where you can sit there and use the three different lengths of uh, hydraulic rams that we have on this vehicle. You notice right now with the rams, it is actually pushing the front end of the vehicle away from the driver compartment. During this whole process, you always have a man at the controls to shut down in case of a, an emergency, a broken line, or unfortunately, you know, the patient being trapped and we have to redistribute the equipment. Once they do that, a wedge is put into the, the cut in case of a hydraulic failure to keep it from snapping back onto the patient. Now the tools have been removed, the, the dash is still safely away from the patient, allowing access to emergency medical personnel to treat the patient. and. Tools are uh, removed from the scene for better access through the driver compartment. This whole process took about 20 minutes to totally dismantle a vehicle. Uh, ordinarily, in an actual crash situation, we would just remove parts that are needed for immediate access, whether it be a door or the roof or both. Okay, I'm Lieutenant Wilson, Lieutenant of Oxford Rescue One. I want to thank the crew. Excellent job, guys.
got your head. Good afternoon, this is Deputy Chief Turtlelot from the Oxford Fire Department. What we're looking at here is a typical Oxford firefighter in his structural firefighting turnout gear. We'll just explain a little bit what firefighter Tripp is wearing this morning. We'll start with the helmet on the top of his head. This is a fiberglass composite helmet, specially designed for structural firefighting. It's designed to keep the heat and water away from his head. You'll notice there's ear flaps that go down and cover his ears and a face shield which will go down and cover his eyes and uh, protect his face. Andrew is also wearing under the helmet over his head a Nomex hood which is designed to protect his neck and ears from the heat of a uh, of a fire when he's inside the building. The turnout coat is a specially made turnout coat for structural firefighting as well as the pants and the gloves they're all made with three layers of protection. An outer layer which is Nomex material which is a flame retardant material. An inner vapor barrier and thermal protection barrier that helps keep the heat out from his body and also lets his body heat escape and be absorbed um, as he's working in the fires. As you go down, you'll see also a uh, flashlight on his turnout coat. Every firefighter is equipped with a personal flashlight. These are rechargeable flashlights that are specially designed to um, cut through the smoke and, and haze inside a building. On the front of uh, his jacket also you'll see the ear mask that would normally be worn on his face. This is connected to a tank of clean breathing air on his back. This is a 30 minute tank. We can get approximately 20 minutes of working time inside a fire. He's breathing clean purified air through that tank. Those tanks can be refilled if he goes through the tank and needs to go come out and then go back into the building. We can refill the tank um, right while it's on his back or we can replace it with a new tank. We also wear a pair of specially designed uh, pants, what we call bunker pants. It's a combination of pants and boots, rubber boots. And these again protect the firefighter from the heat and the water while inside a building. The boots will protect his feet. They have a steel insole which will prevent him from puncturing uh, should he step on nails or other sharp objects. They also have steel toes if anything is dropped on his foot. On the, also on the front next to the air mask is an integrated alarm which we call a pass device and that will sound a very loud piercing sound should the firefighter fall and become motionless for a period of time. It's a safety device that would help us locate the firefighter should he fall or become incapacitated. It also acts as a speaker while he's talking through his air mask or have a radio plugged into it. Uh, it would act as an external speaker also. So this completes the firefighting ensemble. This uh, particular ensemble is designed to NFPA standards, which is the National Fire Protection Association. These are designed specifically for use in structural firefighting. Temperatures in a structure fire can get up to 800 degrees in a normal working environment and up to 12 or 1300 degrees at ceiling level. So that is one reason why the thermal barriers are so bulky and, and protective to allow him to operate in those kind of conditions for extended periods. This entire ensemble will cost uh, roughly in the area of $3,000 to outfit a firefighter. The overall weight of this turnout ensemble on a firefighter is approximately 60 pounds. This is one reason why 
health and fitness is so important in the fire service and continues to be a priority of our people. What we're doing here today is uh, we're training the general homeowner on how to use the uh, fire extinguishers at their residence. This is the Bullock's fire extinguisher training system. The homeowner will, um, will properly demonstrate the use of a fire extinguisher. They usually work for about two, one to two minutes. Okay, good. Excellent. Great job. Well, Okay, well thank you for coming. That's going to wrap up our open house for this year. I hope you enjoyed your virtual tour of the Oxford Fire Department and our fire prevention activities. I'd like to remind everybody to stay fire safe, don't get burned, not just fire prevention week but throughout the year.
We hope to be back in touch with you throughout the year with different public service announcements and safety messages as the holidays and other seasons come upon us. Thanks again.